Hey guys, this is Kirop speaking and today we are back in automation with the Ellisbury update and our keycar extravaganza in Gazmir. We are approaching the uh, very end game and I think today I'm going to uh, record all the remaining episodes. So maybe a few left? Let's see where we are at. It is the year 2001 and we are just about to start the final design of the uh, Nugget 2000. Yes. Because looking at this, well, it's a car from 1981. <laughs> All the way back. And it's time for a final uh, proper new model. We've already designed the city version of it and uh, now we're going to uh, fill out the remainder and this, and this, this this car was based on the Duramax, is that correct? Uh, let's see, where, where, are all the, where are all the engines? Here they are. Duramax i3-660, production version 1. Oh yes. It is desirable, oh, that's good. Let's uh, dive into it and see where we were at, how I've chosen to design it. It's a while back that I recorded, as you know there was another break. Got sick in the meantime and had way too much to do um, looking into new, new racetrack design for automation and so also some supercharger stuff. So um, let's see, we have this body chosen, that's, oh, which variations do we have? Yep, all that we need, uh, people mover, okay, we make a family version of, of that, but this is a, uh, maybe the five door. Should we use the five door? Nah, this is just two seats, right? So, no. Okay, cool. Going really advanced here. Yes, that is what we um, what we intended. I remember that now. Saving some time, though, on the engineering. The Duramax, of course, is fantastic. Uh, 660 cc and 133 horsepower. Oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> All-wheel drive it is. <laughs> okay, that's... That's an interesting choice there, Kiro. Uh, th this is all looking solid though, it's already set up. And I think, ooh, luxury sat-nav with some tech pool remaining. This is a two-seater version, so proper city. Uh, and manual but uh, full electronic stability control. And some niceness in the dampers, okay. That's a decent build and we can see that it's doing pretty well. Now, let's continue on by uh, first seeing how quick these modern cars are that we are producing. This one should be pretty drivable, so uh, expect a decent time from it. And indeed, yep, yeah, that's uh, 236. That's slow-ish, but it's fine. This is below 1,000 kilos still, so it's, it's decent. It's decently quick. And now we shall fill out the remaining uh, trims with, mm, let's say, a family version that is built on top of the people mover variation of the body, and then a convertible. Ooh, this is a convertible coupe. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, but yes, we are going to pick this one. And now uh, let's just retune everything a little bit so that we do get... Uh, well, first of all, <laughs> put some more seats in. Yes, this is not enough. We can fit five people. This thing being a little heavier, I think I'd just go for overall slightly wider tires. That brings the steering behavior much closer to where it needs to be to. And after upgrading the brakes... Uh, do we actually need this? No, we did not have any brake fade, so it's just brake force adjustments that will do the trick. And there we go. So now just a quick check through. We have all the same options still active. And I believe, yeah, yeah, this is uh, all looking pretty solid. It's on medium tires for optimal comfort. And that is a pretty good split. Turning things green. My favorite pastime in automation. So let's uh, do the, uh, the convertible and see where we land. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a little bit awkward due to uh, its convert uh, no, convertible coupe nature. But, yeah, let's see how it goes. And which one are we going for? Soft top? Um, yeah, probably. 
Oh, okay. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Um, convertible. Let's target that one and see how it goes. Everything is yellow. I assume that is because of uh, this choice. Yeah, it makes it a little greener. Still more to do. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's so heavy. It is so heavy now. We need to retune the suspension. Uh, to stiffen it up slightly should be enough in the rear, mostly. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Okay. Convertible Sport. They love it. The problem I foresee here is that we are going to make an Electron version of a convertible. And that, of course, will be somewhat superior, but also way more pricey. So maybe this one has a place. Ah, oh, those little complaining bastards are already bitching about body age being a thing. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll give them that. And beyond to the year 2000, the uh, progression of body age penalties is severely uh, tempered down. Because, basically, design-wise, nothing changed <laughs> in the modern times. They all look the same, so we have this... this uh, secondary curve for when body age penalty is flattening out and that's the 2000s and beyond the randomizer gave me the the name hummingbird so i think yeah that, that's that's cute and quite agile so i think we're going with this but now it is time to make sure that we can produce this thing adding the various uh, trims has of course blown out our engineering time just slightly. We are already pushing all the billions into this project and <laughs> its engineering because we don't care anymore. And reliability, uh, yeah, this is uh, a little tricky. Uh, but you know what? What do we need familiarity for now? Oh, I guess well, the slider we need for um, reliability. That's that's a problem. But we can always adjust that a little later but 80 uh, this is not great is it yeah okay well we can facelift it real quick afterwards and make it good so we yeah, let's let's take this and now the engine I think there was nothing else to change here oh wow yeah good upgrades from the prototype version Ah, oh, this will drag up reliability, the reliability score of the car a little. <laughs> Even though it is a inversely added... Um, how would I describe how this is calculated? Hmm. So, you know, when you have uh, two vectors and you, you want to have the, the distance between the points they, they, they span, or distance, just distance between two points, is um, the, the one coordinate difference squared plus the other coordinate difference squared and then the whole thing, the sum of those two, square rooted. That's that's the distance, right? Uh, between two points. And this is kind of how this works, but inversely. So it's one over the uh, respective part, which in practice means that the component that has the worst score weighs more heavily than the component that has the better score. Because if you have something that is really damn reliable, that is placed in something that is really not reliable, it's very likely that the thing inside that is reliable is not going to break first. So <laughs> it doesn't affect reliability all too much then. So that's, uh, that's the way it's calculated. But um, yeah, this is looking okay. Uh, factory setup. Oh, right. Well, this is the Duramax. So that means we put it into the factories that were building the 660 MK6, right? Oh, damn, that's three factories. All of these. Oh, yes. Just making a casual 49,000 engines a month. And it's not even that expensive to retool. I like me some big engine factories. They are very good. Unlike the die replacement that you need for the car factories, which is horrendously expensive. Holy shit. Okay. We are, we're making a total, or we have a production capacity of a total of 100... What is this? Uh, 130,000 engines a month. 
And we're going to use these three factories to build it. Uh, let's see, tiny weird cars is not going to participate. The utility ones, the huge ones, are going to build the next one that we're designing also today. Well, in this episode, rather. Oh, here comes the big cost. Oh yes, semi-space frame. But I don't think I need steel presses anymore. Do I? Galvanization plant is going away too. Am I getting money back? <laughs> That's kind of you. So we build all of these uh, aluminium presses, semi-space frame. Oh, I, I see. We do need this too, don't we? Otherwise it's handmade parts. Yeah, fuck that. Uh, aluminium presses too. So it's ouch. It is ouch. It is uh, quite ouch still. Why is this so expensive? Holy shit! Wait a sec, that... Ah, no, it's... okay. This has... yeah. This... <laughs> it's not because the building is worn down. <laughs> it is because we're building add-ons. Right, that makes sense. Uh, so, major tooling is money back. That's good. Uh, it's because we're selling so much. The car material costs are like crazy in this. Really? Well, we're making a pretty advanced car out of full aluminium, so I guess this is a bit more on the expensive side. Oh, we do need to... Oh, there, we can delete this one. Just switching add-ons for all the factories. This one had one add-on more on it, so that's, that's why I was confused for a bit. Cool. This shows you very clearly that we do have enough capacity to uh, to produce this car with this engine and then add two um, huge factories on top of it. Is th oh, wait a sec. I wanted to expand this one to a large three, didn't I? That's just 1.8 billion then. What are we aiming for? 60% margin? Something around that would work? Yes. Okay. And the family version then gives us the the most buck for production units, per production unit. The demand seems to be very low. I don't quite believe it to be that bad. It is a somewhat expensive car though. Yeah, uh, okay. Well, we'll, we'll take it. It's fine. 4.26 billion. 60 months. Back to hub. Next one, please. That booby is up next. Yes. We are aiming at four. Hmm. Where, where do we want to place the main focus? Light delivery, probably. Oh, no. Manually generate. Thank you very much. Uh, there's not that much choice in here. <laughs> I'm not going to choose this one. But uh, I think we were eyeing this lineup. Because we do have the van option, we do have a general people mover, kind of family oriented, family utility oriented one. And the pickup of course, it's a tiny pickup trailer. Can't go that back that far. Yeah, have to choose these. This is very close to unlocking as well naturally, so that means we can put a lot of quality into the body choice. This one is not going to be full aluminium, that's for sure. Uh, instead, what are we going to do here? Mm, treated steel would be an option. That will mean that we do need the steel treatment plant, which is super expensive. But, I mean, usually I don't build it because I don't have the money. But <laughs> well, that's not the problem right now. Monocoque, and then we go for... Uh, AHS, Advanced High Strength Steel. And here I think we're going for a mix again, right? Solid coil front and solid leaf rear. Plus 5 out of 8 just to hasten it along a bit. So it's 60.5 months for all the options here without the familiarity. Um, taking that. Oh well, I don't actually know if it's with the familiarity or not. But... No, that probably is without, because this would not be a single vector of 60 months. So let's go ahead and use the existing engine Duramax. Indeed. There we go, PV1. 
Do we want to continue using auto lockers? Oh, no, not manual lockers, not auto lockers. Uh, manual lockers here for these. Or should we make the jump to all wheel drive there too? Let's see how it goes with the 4x4. Because we do want to have this off road version done as well, right? So um, let's see. Uh, advanced automatic 5, and then we can go for. Yeah. Uh, helical, because otherwise. Oh no, manual locker. Of course. Manual locker needs to go. Otherwise, this isn't as potent, nearly as potent as uh, it, it could be. Uh, could go for an, for an all-wheel drive helical and then manual locker. <laughs> but no, we keep it classic. Just some preliminary setup of the gearing. Yeah, it's looking about right. Ah, pickup version. Okay, let's put utility tires on this one. Probably 175. It's still a lightweight car, all considered. And steelies, yes. Oh, shit! Look at this. This is the maximum size it can have. That is tiny. Okay, by the way, I, I know it looks fucking stupid, this car, but uh, that, that's what we got. So let's make it <laughs> a bit better. <laughs> Not really, but... <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's hard to beat. Okay, utility version could get a fully clad. Uh, or we go for off-road skid tray on all of them, but what is the weight here? It's adding 30 kilos versus how much? Half of it. Hmm. Now, okay. This is still a utility vehicle with tiny wheels, so you are going to scrape on the ground as soon as you enter any kind of gravel road. Um, especially the ones that have the, the, the bump in the middle. Uh, with grass growing on them, you would be scraping that all day long. And that's why I'm going to select this one for the utility version. But then for the light delivery version, I think I'm going fully clad so that we get some additional uh, efficiency as well. Uh, fuel efficiency. And also a luxury sat-nav in it with plus five quality. That's a good starting point. And we are going for... Ooh! How heavy is this thing going to be? Uh, do we want to put in a wobbly, schlobbly electric uh, s power steering? Hmm. That's nasty. Air suspension. Yes, yes. That is what we're going for still. That's pretty awesome. Uh, adaptive. Yes. And passive. Oh, and then we have off-road for the uh, proper off-road version. That is going to be uh, quite a bit of fun. So, uh, we do need the better tune, set it to normal, it should do the trick for most of it. Yes, off-road utility, utility, uh, what is plaguing the minds of these people? Why, why don't they like it? Okay, could be the reliability, and could be the lack of... Uh, action. No, I mean, utility, <laughs> utility, utility comparison. Uh, right, that's a little awkward. Um, but there we are, a little below standard, just slightly, but considering it's such a small car, that's not too bad. Where we are sucking big time is um, t towing capacity? No, it's also fine. Uh, and utility, what is this? Oh, capacity, capacity, yes. Mmm, oh, that, that is, oh, ouch, oh, yeah. <laughs> And <laughs> slightly bad. Um, our engine is, of course, the usual 660cc, and the competitor is almost, is it eight times as big? Oh, I see what they don't like. Uh, well, the steering behavior for once. And another aspect could be the brakes. One of the issues here is the amount of brake fade. This thing is so front heavy. Uh, 10% brake fade, and I mean, this doesn't really help. Like, minus 2% there. We do need larger rotors. That's the only thing that really will give us what we need. So, let's see what we can make happen with the wheels. Um, how about... <laughs> oh, no. Well, we need to make these a little different anyway. Let's go for uh, slightly... Mm, oh, this hurts. Uh, should, should we go with 13 front? 
<laughs> yep, okay. So now... Oh, no, wait a sec. We need to go larger, not smaller. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay. We go 50 in front, of course. I was thinking the wrong way. This is exactly the wrong thing that we don't want to do. But um, then we can reduce... Well, if it's front heavy, we don't want to reduce width there. The low disk is supposed to be going into the rear, though, so I guess. And also, the uh, this is only for the steering behavior. We can fix it. We can fix it later. But does this help now? Uh, we should be able to get... Yeah, yeah, that's better. And if we add a little bit of pad type too, that will further improve things. Go for three pistons and then readjust the the braking power overall because that's now slightly excessive. Oh, it does want to have a lot of it though. Yeah. Okay, competitor score is now a beaten. Indeed. Very good. But this is <laughs> still not quite optimal. Our driving steering behavior is awful. How much does it weigh? Below a thousand, but most of it is in the front there. So do we want to go for the manual rack and pinion for the extra sportiness? Uh, nah, 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 it's not, it's not really, not really what we need actually. <laughs> so let's go with the electric. Okay, well, this is pretty bad. Look how much tow we need to get this, <laughs> get this under control. Okay, this is somewhat decent a setup. You do have the steering behavior right. They still don't quite like it, but uh, who are they to choose? <laughs> they they have to buy our cars. Can make it a little higher. No, I think the utility version just wants to be that. And then uh, for the off-road, we can cram it up a bit. Cram it up a bit? Crank it up a bit, yes. Not trying to cram anything in into something else. So let's see. Uh, this is as mediocre as it gets for a utility version. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. This doesn't look good. But maybe, maybe it does find a place. A place in a lineup that hopefully doesn't suck too much. Oh, one thing that I forgot is to set the body quality. So um, let me quickly do this for the utility version. It will improve things in general because that adds quite a bit of reliability as well. And uh, who doesn't like reliability? Let's see. Currently they are at 77% and uh, after the change of putting a plus 7 on this, uh, we are at whew, 96 points. <laughs> well, 97% basically. That is a good change indeed. Okay, how do you turn this thing into an off-roader? <laughs> let's, let's go with an off-road safari bus uh, XS in size. But first things first, can we make this a little larger because it's so damn small? No! This is the maximum size already. Oh, they instantly love it as an off-road vehicle without any changes. Yeah, let's go for this one. Uh, how many Yeah, seats were just two in the other one? Let's put in... Uh, four? How many do you want, you guys? Two to five. Maybe I do plus three or something? That is quite handy because you can remove the seats and thus get a much more utility or practicality focused vehicle. Uh, um, let's see, 63 versus uh, 63. <laughs> okay. Do we want to have this instead? Uh, of, let's see, hold this car and go to a plus three. Let's see the difference. So we do get, with the uh, plus three, we do get better drivability, sportiness, slightly less comfort, uh, same practicality basically, and overall, I've, oh wow, it's much lighter, much, much lighter. I'm going with this one. And cheaper too. Oh yeah, that's cool. Ah, oh, that's because of the luxury sat-nav. <laughs> it's so damn expensive if you have three full seats and they all want their entertainment. Yeah, I can see that that is not the necessarily the best choice to make. But now, off-road uh, sway bars. So, being able to decouple them. 
Let's see, do, do they actually love it? Uh, Off-road 99 goes to 107, was it? Yeah, yeah that's pretty good. Yeah, let's, let's use them for the first time and the last time. And that was without setting up the sway bar stiffness to something that makes the car reasonable. Though the difference is now even larger when we um, switch back, I would think, because now it's really bad for off-roading. Yeah, okay, the difference is larger, but overall the car is just better. Oh, we haven't changed the wheels yet. Uh, let's go at least all-terrain. That should help it a lot. Ooh, oh yes, chunky off-road. And uh, slightly better still. Do we want to... Oh, that's half a litre extra of fuel acre. It's pretty awful, but I think we do want to specialize them as hard as possible, or do we? All-terrain is so much better all around, though. Uh, let's uh, clear the held car. Hold this and just go and compare... Uh, how much are we sacrificing? One, drivability, a little bit of sportiness, comfort as well, and some practicality uh, for a pretty hefty gain in off-road stat and a slight gain in utility. Hmm. I think we're going super specialized there so that we widen our market in total with this lineup. That would make sense. Well, we're supposedly selling quite a few vehicles here. That's looking somewhat good. Family. <laughs> the Ahanan families are truly wanting to buy this. Utility off-road and delivery is last. It's van time. Oh yeah, this, this is the only one in this uh, lineup that looks reasonable. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, this is a mini A-team van. And we are going to... Um, just check through if it makes sense. They think it makes sense. A lot of sense. And here we wanted to go for fully clad. Let's see what difference this makes. 5.6 to 5.4. Considering that we do have almost 50% familiarity in here, I don't think that's too bad a choice. My changes haven't made much of a difference uh, but to the overall desirability that is, but somewhat more reasonable. And now... <laughs> well, this one is doing well. This one is doing really well in the segments it should. Well, could be argued, heavy delivery, it's not really that, no. The uh, randomizer suggested hair, and I changed it to bunny. And there you have the, the, the perfect um, utility vehicle lineup. It's called the bunny. It's nice and cute, but also um, it's everywhere because we sell so many of them. Oh, well, that's fortunate. Base setup, and <laughs> exactly, or almost exactly, 60 months. Uh, a few changes here and there will help us. 85 reliability? Ooh, that needs a bit higher. Be a bit higher. Funding! All the funding. It's not that expensive. 290 million. And now we have a little leeway there to increase that number, because that number is the most important for utility buyers. Uh, we can go to 95 reliability and in the first facelift of this one we are going to update the, the tooling and process and such. The engine production graph is looking good so far but none of these factories are activated and we do want to activate both of these. Treated steel, 300 million. Galvanization plant can go fuck itself and we put this one in. Yes. Otherwise, there's no change. It's so expensive. Ah, well, it's probably the interior. <laughs> My luxury stuff that I put into it. Uh, that's what you get for it. At one point... Wow, okay, that's quite quite expensive. And now the engine factories are starting to behave the way they should. So, roundish two shifts for two shifts. Okay. That is looking good. Uh, do we have... Oh, no QA on this one. Because it's so damn good already. Can we do this for the first one as well? That will be... That will be fantastic. Nah, nah, nah. It's not good enough. This is not good enough. Oh, wait a sec. Is this one in 
Gasmia and the other one is in Hedvesia and that's why we can't... Yeah. Gasmia. And now, that is the difference. This is our mega factory in Hedvesia. And because it is in Hedvesia, with the most highly skilled workers in all of the automation universe, uh, that is why we can run this completely without quality assurance, because it's so damn good out of the gate. All right, well, that makes sense. That gets us some additional production. And even though they cost more in labor, uh, they make up for it in quality. Let's try a 50% markup. See where that gets us in terms of production volumes and uh, projected profits. Yes, okay. 12.7 billion in five years. Take it. Okay, this is, this is becoming quite impressive. I mean, 8.5 billion project. 60 months, and we can sign that one off. Uh, yes, this is all we need, right? The Duramax, Hummingbird, and the Bunny. Oh, look at the conditions that we're getting there, though. 3.85. It's really damn good. I think that's the lowest you can you can go, really. But, uh, no. <laughs> no interest in taking out even more money. Uh, so, Taxman will be happy. Uh, not happy. I will be happy. Let's sign it off. There we go. You see how confident I was? I didn't even save be uh, before sign-off thing. That is how good it is. And, uh, or rather, not, I don't know. But, um, that, it doesn't really matter. Even if it doesn't sell, it probably won't be uh, able to bankrupt us until the uh, end of the game. But now we should take a look at what can be done as a follow-up to the Electron. That is going to be quite interesting because it is going to be based on the Ultramax, which already had an MK2 version. Hmm, slight upgrade there. And we're going to go hard into the Light Sport and Light Sport Premium. Hmm, let's see what we can do uh, with what car bodies we have available. I think there was one that I really wanted to use, but let's see what's what's actually here. We do want to have a small, a really small coupe. Um, what bodies? Standard bodies? Yeah. No, oh, I, I do want to have body type. Yeah. And how did I do this? Like right click? Yes. Well, this could be our hypercar. That would be good. Um, this one is really nice, but it is so far into the future that we would be losing all the body quality. I mean, have to go with this one, right? Kai-sized 2005 coupe. <laughs> it's, it's made for us. And otherwise, we have to go back to the 90s. Yeah, no, fuck that. Uh, we are going to go with this one. Or oh, rather, this one. And we do have... Ooh. Oh, so many cool options in here. <laughs> no, okay, then. I really don't like this kind of shape of car, but... Um, uh, th this, is, this is cool. This is cool. We can, we can make something out of this. Um, what are these panel gaps? I can see them from space. Okay, so the plan is that we do make a normal, in air quotes, normal sports car version. That normal sports car version will only be uh, somewhat extravagant. And then we do make a hypercar version that is going to only get the very best and carbon fiber and all that, right? Now we are going to design or put the components together, not design, not visually at least, uh, this more standard car. Because the other one will have to be, be based on the hypercar looking body that we eyed on the at the end of the last episode too I guess um, but yeah what do we what do we choose here full aluminium and uh, uh, should we go with a monocoque and then glued it would make a lot of sense for such a small car the alternative would be um, light AHS uh, that would also be really damn good. And that can be mass-produced. So I think I'm going with this one. 
But this will require <laughs> aluminium presses and steel presses. Ah, uh, yeah, it's fine. Um, front longitudinal, yeah. And double wishbone all around, and we put. Oh, oh, come on! Oh, that that is ouchies. Let's go with just plus four. Wow. We replaced the variant, and that is the Ultramax. The Ultramax prototype. Uh, Sport. This one. Not the race. The Sport. It is the PV1S. The production version one spot. Whew, okay, this is, <laughs> this is a little spicy. <laughs> that's uh, that's good. That's a good thing though. Uh, okay, this is all all good stats. It doesn't weigh anything. Two hundred fifty-two horsepower. Yeah. Okay. Mm, the reliability. If I slide this up by uh, two steps, it only changes by zero point three. Uh, no. That was the wrong thing to look at. It was the throttle response. I meant the reliability. So uh, we step it up. And that's a decent chunk. This is a decent chunk. That is for the the price of mm, three production units. Hmm. Makes it a bit more expensive. But I think we use this one. Yep. A little bit more reliable. And now, compression well, that's uh, all turboed stuff. Let's take a look at the graphs. We're not even using the turbo because we spooled so damn early for the size of compressor. So maybe this is just too large. But the problem is, if you make it too small, it's super inefficient. And this does get into the range of efficiency at the top end where we want to make all the power. That is a nice change we can make. Yes. Up to plus nine from plus six to plus nine in direct injection. And we are almost hitting 255 horsepower. Ah, and now we do. Perfect. That's cool. Uh, that's a good good figure for a car that probably doesn't weigh all too much. Body quality, yes, please, is the answer. Do we want to go beyond? Nah, production units really skyrocket then. So let's keep it at plus eight. Going with an on-demand system does make sense here. Oh, and we don't have dual clutch yet, so it is auto manual then. That might just not be sturdy enough for <laughs> for the size of the gearbox that we try to put in. Now I'm going with manual. That's also more sporty. And six gears, because we are now going to get to pretty good top speeds. Keeping it simple though with the helical limited slip diff and a plus four ish production units are fine. No, engineering time is, is good. Can go plus six. Sports compound and magnesium. Oh yeah. Okay. A little bit of downforce doesn't hurt for these cars and cooling airflow can be lowered slightly. Quality, of course, upped. Don't don't want to do too much here. We only have 14% familiarity with this. So a plus three, maybe? Sport interior and luxury sat nav at plus seven. This is so lightweight that it's not having any issues with manual rack and pinion. Um, but do we want to slap this one on? I think we do. Yep. Advanced safety at plus four. And then optimize weight to something lighter. Final settings. Ah, yes, the active sport. And semi active. And nothing. Do we have familiarity? Yes, we do. A little expensive over the adaptive. But does give. Some... Whoa, oh my god, those stats are pretty good apart from comfort. We have to fix that one up. Uh, let's just do the normal sport tune. That's much better. Ah, oh, fuck. Safety standard. Uh, let's see what we can do about the safety standards. Uh, we do need 45. We do need 45. I think this is now affecting Gazmir and... Or oh, is Gazmir in... 2010, where it goes to 45. Right. I've got to make this a little safer. 
So one way of doing this is to up their chassis quality. Um, well, that doesn't make much of a difference. So no, that's not a way to do it. Though another way to do it is to up this quality. Uh, can we, how much does it increase? A decent chunk. So I wonder what happens if we go for something like making the car heavier. Uh, where is it now? Here, making the car heavier. Set it to standard. It's 40, 44.1. Need one more. Fix the steering. Gives us some even nicer stats. But um, desirability penalties, yes. This means that some regions will love us, others will not. Let's quickly find out which ones there are. And this is, oh, so it's definitely two regions. Okay, there you go. It is Gazmir and Hedvesia. So, question is what to do about this. Should we ignore it for now? And then in the facelift, make it um, conform with the safety standards because then we have access to 2010's advanced safety. Oh, there was a lot more sportiness in this. So much brake fed, 16%. Oh yes, the stats are coming together nicely. 800 kilos. Yeah, five, five liter fuel economy. It's looking like exactly what we want, apart from the slight problem with uh, safety. Definitely the arch nemesis of a light sports company. But um, yes, we can put it on the track. Let's see how quick it is. I have already optimized the steering behavior fast and slow. Uh, there we go. Yeah, it's somewhat on point. Don't want to sacrifice more sportiness there. And this one is not terminally oversteering. Uh, that means we should have a pretty good time here on this track. Shifting as slow as ever, but whoa, that's a 210. That's a rapid one. Can we make it cheaper by making the tires? Um, oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> making the tires more reasonable. There we go. Um, so 300 max means we do not have to have the, the Y tires. Uh, no, the, the Y in parenthesis tires, right? That's the, the higher one level. Uh, let's just, this is so long ago. Is this, is this doing it? Yes, exactly. That's, uh, I remembered it right for once. So yes, we do want to have the not parenthesis Y tires because they are cheaper. This is slightly awkward. <laughs> the second gear getting to 99 kilometers an hour. Got to fix this. So we have that should give us a better acceleration time. Uh, how much of a difference does that make? Because that's a full shift away, right? What? Doesn't want to shift there? Maybe it doesn't. Oh, there we had it. 3.4, I did see. There. Now it doesn't shift. Very respectable time, that is. Oh, we have to check our emission standards as well. No! <laughs> we are not passing them Noxus. I didn't even check the other car. I think that's not going to be a, a problem at all. But yeah, this is uh, not great. Let's see how bad it is. Um, car emissions. Ah, uh, okay. This is at zero. <laughs> how, okay, I, 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 yeah, that, that's not supposed to pass then. Um, it's not supposed to pass at all. There, there you go. We, now we're at seven. Are you kidding me? Never seen a number that low. Um, Oh, that's good. So we're passing 11, no problems. There it starts to hurt, and there we fail. Okay, so we just need to go to here. Easy. Oh, that would be a fantastic way to bankrupt us, by the way. If the um, the bunny and the, the other car that are using the Duramax, if they were not uh, emissions optimized, that would be fantastic. Um, that would require a really quick facelift. And I think we're done here with the base design. So let's double check that these are actually okay. 11. They are 11. 
and 11. So yeah, it's not an issue. So far, so good. That's a lot of designing going on. Ooh, oh, that one takes a while. Um, and hopefully that is going to be the last design that we have to make, apart from, of course, the hypercar and uh, a facelift once all of them are out and then just let the game run till the end and then uh, maybe maybe i find some time to to drive a car too we shall see anyway i hope you enjoyed and i shall see you guys next time but only if you smash the like button for me thank you very much bye bye